We have a great change agent, the great managers and administrators, the best multipliers of wealth. They're the best avenue to educate a nation. And I've seen that in the course of my job traveling the world. The nations that are doing really well have 65% percentage of literacy among women. Nations that have below the poverty line in highest rate, according to the World Bank statistics, has 75% of the literacy rate among women. So women are very key. My second question is our message. When the internet started, so many world nations refused to embrace that technology. So many institutions and corporate organizations refused to embrace that technology. Today, 80% of those corporate institutions are dying because they refuse to embrace the technology. And for history students in the room here, you realize that for every nation that grows, it is the power of technology that they ride all behind. When the Internet 2.0 started, the couple of guys were very wise enough, gave birth to Google. Google created a platform for you and I to search for information. And we go on Google, we search for information. The more information you and I are searching, there is an algorithm that stands like a human being in the room, the you and I, we are actually training the human technology. And today, we have Internet 3.0. Internet 3.0, whichever name you want to give to it, is blockchain. Internet 3.0 will digitalize everything you can imagine. From finance, to, to, to banking, to insurance, to healthcare. We might not be, have seen it yet in Nigeria and Africa, but this is happening. It's a good time in the history of humanity. It is also scary. Africa has missed four chances. This is another chance that we must not meet. And I'm saying this because it is very dear to me and I'm passionate about it. And that's the reason why I've influenced my company to sponsor this event. Because I believe that every woman in this room has a role to play. And we need to come from that belief system that access to financial instruments has to be through the bank. Access to financial instruments starts and is honed by the community. And that power of community is what blockchain thrives on. I was in Nigeria three weeks ago. I had conversations with different people. With, I was with Oni of IFE, I was with CBN. And I could actually see that our policy makers do not have an understanding about this technology. So the only, thing that, the only people benefiting from this are banks. Because the banks knew the moment the blockchain come into this space, it takes the power from the bank into the hands of everybody sitting out here. And it's happening in Kenya with m -Pesa. Because what m are doing started with women in a local village that begin to trade within themselves. And today in Kenya, women in many communities in Kenya are owners and distributors of wealth. And I'm looking forward to that time when Nigeria saw the sales giant of Africa will jump on that wagon. Our message, financial inclusion is possible with the help of blockchain. And that takes me to this question. Over two billion unbanked people in Africa, blockchain revolution will bring financial inclusion for all in Nigeria and Africa. Do you agree? I wouldn't want you to answer that question. Yes. But a time will come in the next five years, remember today, in the next five years, something magical will happen. Whichever name the international corporations will give to it, because they have a very special way of ripping Africa off. They package it, they give it a very different name that you can't comprehend. And then they sell it to banks and corporates and government, and then they rip the people off. And at this point in time, I'm part of this history. I'm in Nigeria, the proud one everywhere I go, I fly that really high. And I'm really passionate that Nigeria will start this revolution. Poverty is an institution. War is an institution. War first poverty. 
the belief system given to you in how is we need to work really, really hard to break through and to accumulate wealth. But there's a difference between working hard and working smart. They're two different things. In Nigeria, when the president says Nigeria is used to lazy, people go crazy on social media. Why? Because truly, Nigerian youth, including myself, we are physically hardworking people, but we are mentally lazy people. Why? Because people go to university nowadays and they say they study business management. And I ask myself, yeah, you, you, <laughs> it's a bold statement, I know that. And I said, that's why I use the word myself included. And the logic behind that is for us to start that conversation. The purpose why I'm here, the purpose why I'm giving this, is to start a conversation about the future that you and I can imagine. A future where people can create wealth. A future where you create the money that you want. We're going into an econom economy that will give power to people by incentivizing them. The banks are doing it abroad. You have banks giving you money back through cash back. And I know it's happening in Nigeria as well. Money is free. Educating our women in local areas is really key to making sure and to eradicating poverty in Nigeria. Building a new belief system where we need to reorientate ourselves that money shouldn't be the first thing you think about to make an idea happen. Money should be the last thing to think about to make an idea happen. And I so much appreciate the inputs of a wonderful lady in green in the middle that said, if you have a valid idea, an idea that can truly change something, people will come around it. And because women in finance are doing something that is reaching to the international community that we felt can impact a country, that's the reason why I'm here. So which means the world is watching, imagine a future when we all can print money and have money. That is the future. It's crazy, it's bold, but it's possible. This little machine in my hand, you know, when I said I belong to the future, I'm a futurist. My company, PondyX, we built a system that's going to be the future of bank. A future where everybody only needs this to transact, to send and receive money. A future where every local merchant in Nigeria can loan money and lend money, accept interest through this platform. And this little hardware in my hand is a blockchain technology, is Android 10.0. Because this has not been deployed yet in Nigeria, but in, for those of us that tra do travel a lot, if you travel to Dubai in the next three years, look at this machine very well, you'll see this everywhere. Because we have an understanding and partnership with Dubai Government Central Bank, and they'll be deploying this in Dubai in the next two years. Sweden, all their economy has gone digital, which means the Central Bank of Sweden wants to completely take out fiat out of the economy. And in the future, for those in the bank, we've created this smart card. This smart X pass card is an EMVC certified card, which means a plastic that enables you to encrypt your financial data. So in the future, when every government begins to move on blockchain and have their own digital currency, this will be the only card that you need to store all your digital currencies. And this will be the only machine that you need to buy and sell and transact everywhere in the world. It's bold, it's happening, it's destructive. Thank you.